Hi, this is Mr. Richmond, and for this video, we're going to look at the FET gas law simulation. For your assignment, you need to make a total of four graphs, the first of which is going to be the amount of particles and how pressure is going to respond. There's two ways that you can get particles into your gas chamber for this simulation, the first of which is just by using this pump handle and going ahead and manually pushing in however many particles enter the gas chamber. Or you can change the heavy species by clicking the up and down arrow to change how many gas particles are also in that chamber. So you're going to go ahead, choose 10 different data points, and look at how pressure is going to respond, and that's what you will be graphing. Your independent variable for this graph is going to be the amount of particles, and the dependent variable, what we're going to be measuring, is going to be pressure in ATM or atmospheric units. So what I would do after changing the amount of particles, I would wait about 30 seconds to see how pressure is going to respond. You're going to notice that the pressure never really stays the same. It always fluctuates uh, a few different decimal points. So pick a number that's a ballpark estimate to what you think the pressure resembles and go ahead and choose that for your data point. So that's graph number one. Graph number two is going to represent Boyle's Law, which is the relationship between pressure and volume while holding temperature constant. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the reset button on the right hand side. Let's get some gas particles back in here. And again, for Boyle's Law to be true, you need to hold temperature constant. I'm going to change the volume for this gas chamber by clicking on measurement tools and ruler. That will allow me to get a proper measurement for volume. The unit's measurement is NN. I'm assuming that's nanometers. So I'm going to change 10 different points, the volume of the gas chamber, and see how pressure is going to respond while keeping temperature constant. So for this second graph, the volume, that's what we're changing. That's the independent variable. What we're measuring, the dependent variable, is going to be the amount of pressure in that system. The third graph is going to focus on Charles' law, which is the relationship between volume and temperature. So once again, I hit the reset button. Let's get some gas particles in the chamber. So for this one, I'm going to keep pressure constant. I can change, let's keep volume constant. This guy kind of just drags out for whatever reason. So I'm going to hold volume constant for just a minute. And then we're going to see, uh, now he's going to stay. So that's good. All right, so once pressure is held constant, I can go ahead and change the temperature to 10 different data points. The unit measurement is going to be in Kelvin. So you can drop the temperature and see how volume is going to respond. So the independent variable is going to be the temp. The dependent variable, what you're measuring, is going to be volume and its response to that increase in temperature. So go ahead, pick 10 different data points, and go ahead and make your third graph. I'm going to go ahead and reset this. Let's get some gas particles in here. Whenever that guy starts moving, I just click on volume as a constant parameter. That's a nice way to avoid that little glitch for this system. Um, the final one is going to be Guy-Lussac's law, and that's going to be the relationship between temperature and pressure while holding volume constant. So I'm going to go ahead and change the temperature to 10 different data points. You can add or remove heat. Choose 10 different data points and find how pressure is going to respond to those 10 sets of data. That's going to be your fourth and final graph. For this one, the temperature is going to be your independent variable. Your pressure is the dependent. I hope that was helpful, and good luck with your assignment.